Hey, how's it going? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is for Chess with Investors. I have the distinct pleasure of having my friend Brian Briscoe join me today. How are you doing today, Brian? Doing awesome. How are you doing, Dan? Fantastic. And uh, if you don't know Brian already, you really ought to because he's a deal sponsor in commercial real estate, particularly multifamily. And uh, we are already getting started and I'm starting with White. This is good stuff. Uh, I didn't uh, introduce you very much there, Brian. You want to uh, say a thing or two about yourself? Yeah. Um, originally from Salt Lake City, you know, I've uh, been doing multifamily for quite a while. Um, you know, when I when I was in like third grade, I think I was a chess prodigy. I was able to beat like everybody in my class. Um, had I had a school teacher that was really into chess, and that's what we did when we were down, um, like downtime, is we pull out chess boards. But uh, um, I hate to say it, well, I guess, I guess it doesn't really matter now that I'm adult. But uh, um, I've probably played 20 chess games since. But Real estate wise, um, started buying single family homes in 2007. Um, you know, goal was one per year. You know, some years we did it, some years we weren't able to. Um, but uh, end, of, end of the day, um, that wasn't fast enough for me. So I, I tried to get into, started doing multifamily. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the shoot. Um, and I am terrible at chess, so. Um. Yeah, it's. Uh, did Did you have the same thing that I had, which was um, uh, basically people would play me mm -hmm. about three times, and mm -hmm. then I'd never really get an opportunity to play again against them. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you um, had that too. Geez, it was so long ago that I don't even. Remember. I mean, um, yeah. Good question. Good question. Um, but yeah, it, it was very short lived, you know, I, I, would also go home and play chess with my dad and, um, you know, he'd take it easy on me, you know, just like, you know, when I'm playing with my kids now, I, I take it easy. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, let's see, is it my, no, it's, it's my turn. It's, oh, okay. uh, it's, it's yeah, we're, we're, we're playing a 15 minute game with 10 second increment. So we got plenty of time to uh, right, talk about it. everything. Yeah. But uh, one thing that's uh, fun about you, uh, you, you know, you're you're a Marine. I know that yeah. they say that once a Marine, always a Marine. So I that's shouldn't say, say ex-Marine, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. True. And uh, it, it's pretty wild. It's been a wild, uh, you know, four-ish years of, uh, mm -hmm. of knowing you. I remember uh, when we first met, uh, uh, you had the the issue to productivity, which is uh, having to put your cell phone in a box. <laughs> Yes. At the beginning of your work day? You don't yeah. you don't miss that at all, I bet? I, I don't, you know, and I mean th there's good reasons why we did, you know, there you know, we were always dealing with uh we weren't always dealing with classified stuff, but we, we, we always had the potential to be dealing with like classified information which needs to be protected and so you know, we, we had to take our cell phones in anything that could broadcast externally. Smart watches weren't allowed in, but uh so yeah, there there were a lot of a lot of things that made it difficult. You know, I couldn't answer personal emails on the inside. Everything had to go through my um, my military email account. Um, and so, yeah, when you start looking at, you know, all the things that I, I, I yeah, the, the productivity issues, as you, as you said it, um, it was hard for me to get stuff done. You know, it was... Uh, we're, we're trying making broker calls. I would have to, you know, walk out of my office, grab my phone, and the Pentagon's a big building. You know, it's a, it's uh, at one point it was the largest office building in the world, even though it's only five stories. Um, but you know, it, it'd take you know three to five minute walk to where I could uh, actually have a, a cell phone signal. Um, and so, so to, to to make a call to a broker, it was like twenty minutes away from my desk. But uh, yeah, long story short. Um, you know, it, it ended up, I ended up working through it, you know, and, and part of that was with partnerships. Part of that was just being very, very deliberate with my time um, and and making sure that I was, I was being as efficient as possible, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's essentially, you know, how I, how I got to where I'm at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, being from uh, from Utah, I don't think it's the most uh, uh, obvious thing in the world that um, you also speak Spanish, 
So uh, I remember our last interview, we spent some time uh, uh, talking about uh, linguistics and yeah. uh, going around uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, living in other parts of the world. And uh, I, I remember uh, you had one particularly glowing part of the uh, conversation was uh, about how uh, it taught you to be grateful for where you uh, where you grew up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it's tough to see true abject poverty and not realize that um, you know in America you know you got a few things going on that uh, are really really great. Uh, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna do this. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, because it's pinned, so you can't take it. Yeah. Pinned. I like that term. Yeah, so you got me in check. Mm -hmm. All right. And you probably are going to end up getting my bishop from me, which kind of sucks. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. I was originally thinking about going for the other bishop, the one that's right in front of your king, but I decided against it. And that's why I moved my knight over there. To, to block right. that, you know, they say you're supposed to look like you know five or eight moves ahead. Um, I, I'm 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 about one move ahead on, on chess, you know. So right, uh, especially right. if I'm trying to talk about myself, you know, uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that's probably your advantage. That's probably what you do. You get people talking, and then you're you're sitting looking at the chessboard, planning ahead. But uh, uh, no, I'm. Uh, but any, anyway, yeah, you mentioned the, the foreign travel. Um, yeah, at age 19, I, I served a mission for my church, um, you know, and that was that was a, a very eye-opening experience for me. Um, you know, it's it, it taught me, yeah, we, we, we're not poor here. We are absolutely not poor here. It also taught me, you know, how much opportunity that we have here in, in, in I'm going to say North America because you're in Canada. I think Canada is mm -hmm. you know, very similar. But, you know, I, I realized that I was squandering a lot of opportunities. You know, I had a scholarship to go to college and I didn't get a good enough GPA my first year to keep the scholarship. Um, you know, so there, there are a lot of things that, um, you know, I wish I would have, you know, not taken for granted. And, but yeah, so, so yeah, spending a couple of years overseas really helped me to, um, to not take that stuff for granted. Essentially, you know, and so, um, yeah, so I, I, I lived in Chile for two years, uh, learned Spanish, uh, spent some time in Mexico when I was with the Marines. I was international affairs. Uh, apparently, they, they liked it that I was, you know, bilingual. And I had spent a lot of time outside of the country. Um, so, so I, I spent, I worked in the international affairs department for a while. Um, also learned Portuguese and spent some time in Brazil as well. Yeah, yeah that's good stuff. And um, now one thing that uh, the audience might not be aware, I, I find it impossible to believe that I'll get this uh, episode released today, but it's but it's Halloween. And, it and I know that uh, when it comes to your church, all that kind of stuff, you've never been uh, sensitive about it uh, whatsoever. So uh, uh, if you want to pass, though, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, you know, let, let just drop the question. But uh, it being Halloween, uh, like, is that something in your family that... Uh, uh, is is celebrated or uh, or not? You know, it's fun. You know, and and you know, with a lot of a lot of the holidays that that we celebrate here in the U.S. Um, I mean, yeah, they're you know, you, if you look like the the original the origination of it, it's a, it's a pagan holiday, but it's fun. You know, my my daughter is my youngest is Wednesday Adams um, today. My uh, I got a boy that dressed up as a banana. He's got a banana costume, which is is quite quite humorous. Um, and then my daughter, some something from you know the the kid social media stuff, you know, bunny something or other. I saw her and I'm like, I don't even know what you are. And she she mentioned it and I'm like, I still don't even know what that is. But anyway, they're they're all dressed up today and. Um, yeah, uh, trick or treating's been been something that we we do a lot. I, I think it's just it's a fun family activity. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it does. 
as far as religion, you know, we just treat this as a completely separate, you know, this is this is a fun thing um, and kind of ignore, uh, you know, what the original re religious stuff was, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. It's like to be to be frank, you know, like I, I tell a lot of people uh, the truth about how um, uh, I'm, I'm closest to being a Buddhist more than any other uh, religion and but uh, I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't in a religious family so uh, uh, the the hol the holidays that are gener generally considered Christian uh, it, like the religious part of it was kind of skipped yeah. you know in my family so so that's really what I like about it I like it the fact that it's uh, you know part of it is uh, a little bit of facing your fears you know mm -hmm. the the spooky whatever you want to call it yeah. uh element of uh of all this and um of course uh, how how do you say no to candy right yeah you know and uh, it, it's it, it's one of these things and i you know the the religions i i see why some religions don't uh celebrate halloween i mean it is a pagan holiday it really is you know and so mm -hmm. you know for for people who are really really strict um you know if if you celebrate Halloween, you're celebrating a pagan, you know, a, a non-Christian religion. But the way we celebrate Halloween, putting costumes on and going door to door, we, we've so much lost what that original, uh, you know, Day of the Dead type stuff, All Hallows Eve, all, you know, all, all of that tradition has been completely warped into what I think right now is just kind of a very, very tame version of what it used to be. But yeah, long, long story short, yeah, we, we, we go trick-or-treating. We, we have candy at the house ready for the trick-or-treaters. Um, I think I'm staying at home tonight handing out candy. But, uh, you know, um, e either way, it's still, yeah, it's it's fun. And uh, we enjoy it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it was always a big one in my family. It's, uh, it's I, I, yeah, I, I, like the, I like the spooky stuff. I like, uh, uh, oh. Spooky, scary skeletons, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you ended up seeing the new sizzle reel that I put out for this show uh, for for Halloween, but it had some pretty big cameos, courtesy of uh, of AI. It's it's pretty mm. wild what uh, what can be done. Yeah. And uh, I, I I was basically thinking that um, I was taking the angle of uh, actually I could do that. Hmm. Uh, no Gilbert Godfrey, Godfrey this time, unfortunately. But uh, true, yeah. I guess no Gilbert AI, Godfrey you could do that. I, yeah, I, I probably could. Uh, it, it's uh, of course now he's passed away. Uh, part of part of my issue with um, you know I, I'm still pretty sensitive when it comes to you know copyright infringement and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff because I I think that uh, you know creative people they really do uh, make enormous positive contributions yeah. to uh, to our lives and uh, if they don't get paid for this you know it like. I don't, well, you know, if we're coming from real estate, right? One part about real estate is negotiation. And I think that's the part that most artists mm -hmm. uh, struggle with most. Uh, you, you know, they, they want to be friends with everybody. They want to, you know, make the world a better place. And, you know, they don't want to be uh, making uh, tough deals, uh, especially when, you know, somebody could, you know, lose the place that they've been making memories in and whatnot but uh i guess that's another thing too is uh i i don't i don't think i ever shared this with you but um one one thing that's uh, huge for me is uh uh like it, it took me a while to decide that yes i'm going to be a real estate person mm -hmm. and uh and the term commercial real estate really put me over that edge as far as saying yeah there's nothing i'm not making any uh, you know, like, I'm, I'm not being a, a, a mean person or self-serving by mm -hmm. trying to uh, accumulate wealth and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, if it's commercial real estate, it's mm -hmm. it means that uh, it's for it. It was built to make money. It it's yeah. not the same as when single family. 
Yeah. Right, exactly. So, so whereas you know, in, when you're in single family, you do run the risk of uh, of of having to, you know, foreclose on a building that you know, like grandpa made with his own hands and and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And and that one, I think, is a lot more iffy uh, it, at the end of the day. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, that's what put me over the edge. Yeah, you know, and it's it is. Um, I, I was scared to make the jump up front. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, you know, going going from single family residential to commercial multifamily, you know, it seems like it is a big. And it, it is. There are a lot of things that are you know different. I mean, the scale is different. The management's different. Operations are different. So there there are a lot of differences, a lot of similarities too. But um, I think mentally there was a bigger jump there than. Um, kind of what I had originally anticipated. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, eventually I, I got over that and I thought, you know what? Um, and really it was coaching that helped me getting, getting into coaching. Um, and kind of, kind of back, back that up a little bit. I was looking at a lot of smaller properties, you know, five, eight, 10, 12 unit properties, you know, trying to figure out what I could buy by myself. Um, and it really wasn't a lot that I could buy by myself. Right. And so, um, I, I ended up, you know, walking out of a property one day and thinking, I don't even know if this is a good deal. I don't know how to, you know, judge how much it's going to cost to do renovations. And that's when I decided that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. And I was going to find somebody that could help me. Um, and that got me into the coaching program, and that's that's really what what helped me bridge that gap between the handful of single family homes I had and, and commercial multifamily. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, it, it this is uh, this is a lot tougher than it looks. I got to tell you, and and that was uh, one of the things that was going through my head when uh, when I was asking you to join here, because I know that anytime you're uh, you're playing against somebody who majored in mathematics in mm -hmm. college, you know you're, you're going to have your work cut out for you. Uh, and, yeah, uh, but you know, math math. Uh, th th there's a lot of things where math translates to being a good chess player, but I think more than anything else, it's the practice. Um, you know, uh, which I don't have. I, I was actually thinking about opening a chess book and figuring out, you know, opening plays, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and then I realized that, ah, you know what, I can probably stall long enough to not lose before, you know, we're done. And that's, that's, that's my goal is, you know, I'm being creamed right here. I mean, you, you're, you're at the point right now where you could trade piece for piece and, you know, still win handily. And I'm, I'm doing the best I can to, you know, see if I can delay a little bit longer every single time. But, uh, um, yeah, I think I think I definitely have, you know, the brain power to do this well, but uh, um, lacking in the practice. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you're you're absolutely right about the fact that, um, uh, like, I I originally thought that um, this was a game of uh, where you know smartest smartest person wins, mm -hmm. and now this year I've put in enough time to know it's like yeah no that's just not the case at all it's it's yeah. not even it's not even close it's uh, you know there there are a lot of different. Um, parts of this game that uh, uh, people have already uh, uh, figured out. Uh, they've, they've ironed out all the different possibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and if you, if you choose not to learn from them, then I think it's just, it's just a foolish mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'm just going to use the strategy that you were just saying, which is just mm -hmm. like, go ahead and trade down into an end game. Cause, uh, just use yeah. this material advantage here. I mean, yeah, yeah, you you, de you you have a numbers advantage at this point, and you know I've got let's see five pieces on the board. You got you know more than five, you know, and so yeah, at this point you can even trade down a couple of times and still win. So um, right. I've I've got to take almost two for one. Um, yeah, I've I've got I've got to literally take two for one to uh, come out on top on this one. 
Right. So one of the one of the biggest things for me as far as uh, getting so serious about uh, chess, it, it's uh, it's tough these days to find something for your kids that um, uh, reduces their amount of screen time, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is definitely one of them, which uh, which is really really great. Uh, so that that's part of what I'm up to. Yeah. Um, and I, I do my my son does like to play chess. Um, and he, he's 11, and he's ridiculously smart. Um, I can still beat him, but once again, it's just because, you know, I, I do have a little bit more experience playing, you know. Not a lot more experience, but a little bit more experience playing. Um, and, yeah, I can, I can still beat a 12-year-old. Uh, I think I said he, he just had his birthday, but I, I can still beat a 12-year-old, which uh, is, is good news for me. That's a huge accomplishment these days, especially yeah. if they take it seriously, you know, because like world champs now, uh, it, well, okay, sorry, the, it's the actual world champion right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old he is. I think he's in his 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from China. But uh, the uh, uh, the one who is um, is the contender in in the big championship uh, match, uh, he's I think he's like 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it really is quite crazy um, how how it, it's just it's not how how do you put it it's it's not your it's not your grandfather's game anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, uh, oh crap! Oh well, I know I'm gonna lose. So let's let's. Uh... Oh, there's a resign flag on the right. No, there, I'm making then... you go all the way. All oh the way. sweet. Yeah. Sweet. So, yeah. Because that way I get a queen. There's there's no resignation here, you know. We'll just uh, start going slow until we're both out of time, you know. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, with speaking speaking of like seventeen year olds, um, man, I, I I wish I in in a way I wish I had my seventeen year old brain back. Um, and, and why I say that is. Um, I, I think my mind worked a lot faster, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't trade. I don't think I'd trade speed the speed for, um, yeah, speed of thought, for wisdom, or wisdom, yeah, and experience though. But uh, anyway, that's that's where. There we go. Oh wow! It had little sparks and snow. There, hey, there you go. You didn't. You had zero blunders. That's uh, that's really uh, that was really sweet. So, uh, do you, do you want to do a rematch for another one? I don't know what your schedule is. I know that uh, you're you're coming from another uh, uh, podcast immediately before this, or uh, what's yeah, your schedule I like? I, I don't don't think I have time for another full chess game. How long did that one take? Um, let's see here. So yeah, I think that was about twenty minutes. Twenty-two. So yeah, I don't, I don't have time for another full game, but I got no time. I got, I got probably five or eight more minutes to to keep chatting now. I, sure, I guess let's, sure. Let's well, start a new one, and we'll just, we'll just quit it when. Uh, um, okay. You know, sure. Quit it in about sure. five or ten. I'll, I'll hit the sure, this sure, time. Sure. I might resign. You know, um, but uh, it'll be a time thing. Okay, cool. So I hit the rematch button. So in the bottom right-hand corner, there should be this little icon with a little red one on it to show that uh, right. there's been another challenge. Okay, got Cool, it. we got it. And now I'm black this I'm time. I'm white. Woo -woo. All right, let's see. Last time you opened by doing that. So It's true. I did. It's got to be a smart move. And I think your second it's, uh, move is right there. Yeah. Uh, let me see here for that one. Yeah, I think I still do continue that way. Ah. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, it's I'm go uh, way out of the box here. There's, there's my third move. This is, this is the uh, Briscoe opening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Pat, Pat, okay, Pat, I'm. Pat did. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out of book already. See, uh, see how that one's worked. So, uh, so what I'm setting up is, uh, is called the King's Indian Defense. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I'm gonna, am I gonna do it this way? Yeah, let's do that. It's annoying. All right. Uh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. How about that? Hmm. All right. You know what? You got a pawn. Let's 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 trade bishops. 
Yeah, that works. Oh. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, and th this is this is where you know going back to that knowledge thing. I mean, somebody who studied chess, chest. Did I say chest? I said chest. Uh, I studied, studied chest twice. Yeah. yeah, twice, twice. <laughs> um, anatomy or something. Yeah, but uh, right, right. Um, yeah, somebody who's done a little bit of studying knows, you know, see, sees an opening and they they know what, what what potentially comes ahead of that. And so if if you know the openings, you know what moves are, you know what counters are. Um, yeah, in real estate, you get the same experience, you know, you, you know what happens, you know, good segue there. Mm -hmm. I hope, hope you caught that one, but, uh, um, I mean, yeah, yeah you sure. start, you, you know, what's going to happen. You know, you start seeing things happen. You start seeing occupancy sliding a little bit and you, you can start posturing to, um, to take care of it, you know, um, whatever take care of it means, but uh, you can start posturing to, um, you know, fix the issues that you, you have. But yeah, um, speaking of issues, I've already I've already got myself into issues here. So, hmm. so let's see. A little bit tight, true. Uh, and, and that's the thing, too, is that, uh, you know, like they they tend to talk about how, um, you, you know, like a, a expert chess players are thinking like five moves ahead or something like that. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely true unless we're really talking about the opening and then it gets kind of scary when you find out what you're up against when you're uh going against like a, a top shelf player mm -hmm. and uh because because then it's uh, closer to like 15 moves deep like regardless of what you do yeah. and uh and then you're basically just waiting for somebody to uh, make some sort of mistake Mm -hmm. uh in in that opening and uh and punishing them for it when uh when it happens yeah. that's kind of neat yeah i think i'm still gonna do the trade though yeah i can't take that all right got it yeah. all right yeah. all right so I, by, I by pieces better... i'm i'm only two pawns behind you you know but uh um I think you got a lot, lot more defense set up. So, hmm. I wish, yeah, I, I, I was, I was a little bit. I think I told you this. Uh, yeah, I, did, I definitely told you this. But uh, for everybody else, I was a little bit nervous signing up on this one because I haven't played chess in so long. And you know, um, I'll be honest, I don't like losing at anything. So, um, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I can I relate mean, to that too. Yeah, who, who likes losing? You know, and the, the prospect of coming on this podcast was. Um, let's see the whole world, or at least, you know, Dan's followers are going to see me lose at chess. That does not sound fun, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, what, whatever we're, we're okay with that. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there, there are some major things that the game reveals about, uh, about personalities that, um, that are really important. Uh, I'm going to try this. Uh, and and one of the bigger ones that I think what what's most important in the context of uh, of real estate especially is uh, how easily does somebody give up when when the going gets tough? And uh, and, and move, actually, I just realized. Um, yeah, I just realized that. But uh, all right, yeah. So here we go. Yeah. Um, do you. Now the the hard part for me is 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 the uh, right now is trying not to lose my rook. Mm -hmm. All right, if I do, <laughs> excuse me, uh, getting a little bit of cold right now. But anyway, um, hmm. yeesh. If I move one, if I if I move one piece, I, I lose my rook. If I move another piece, I think I'm trading queens. Um, I, I think you would trade queens too. So, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep my queen and lose my rook. Mm. Now, how do I how do I not lose more? I guess is the question. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure it out yeah. later. Yeah. Well, you don't have as many weaknesses in your position as uh, as you might think. Um, 
Like, like it, it's still tough to, to really infiltrate here. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, if you're playing the long game, um, I mean, you picked up my Rook, and um, now, you, now you've got three more pawns on the board and one more Rook. So, once again, you're in a spot right now where you could, you could almost trade one for one. And, uh, I mean, you could trade one for one and still beat me. So, you put me in a deficit. Um, I, I don't know much chess strategy. I would assume that that's you know, probably what a lot of people like to do is put the other players in a piece deficit. And then, um, yeah, yeah, that's um, one by one, right? And and well, that's the thing too is I like you're probably aware that in college I took electrical engineering, and and so uh, I've been aware of the um, uh, the fact that humans are hopeless compared to computers at this game, yeah, and uh, and and that's um, so so these days uh, pretty much everybody is uh, stuck with. Um, yeah, I still will do my move. Yeah, um, so you, it, it's 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 basically hopeless, and so where that has panned out is uh, especially with chess puzzles. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that uh, that's what it forces you to do. It, it's you know like always simplify, give the opponent fewer opportunities to uh, make surprising moves. Mm -hmm. and then find some sort of winning egg game at the end. Yeah. And you see, I can do that very well with my, uh, with my 12 year old, you know, mastering mm -hmm. that with my 12 year old. Hmm. Oh, didn't see that one coming. Now, okay. now it's time. Now it's time to say, shoot! I gotta hop on over to another call, and I, I do actually. But uh, I think at this point, you've got my queen, and you know, several other. I, I've got two of your knights, two of your bishops. You've got two of my knights, bishop, rook, queen, and four pawns. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a hard time here. So I'm gonna cry uncle right now, and. Uh, you know what? I, I will take a pawn first. You know, and uh, where's the resign button before you take my rook? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, where is it's, it? Ah. Should be should be on your right somewhere. But uh, we need to talk about how to reach out. Of course, your uh, tribe of titans, which is on uh, Mighty Networks, is a great way to uh, get some mentoring in uh, in commercial real estate. Uh, it, it's a great educational platform. Uh, you're also uh, very active on LinkedIn. Uh, what are the best ways for people to uh, reach out to you? Uh, LinkedIn is is really it. You know, you wanna you wanna you wanna hear what I have to say. Follow me on LinkedIn. You wanna join the conversation. Um, you know, hit the connect button and DM me. You know, I, I try to try to respond to every DM. Um, you know, and you know if, if it looks like there's there's a you know some some synergy, we'll we'll hop on a call. But uh, as far as Tribe of Titans, uh, I, I do have an education program for people who want to learn how to do what I'm doing. A um, couple of different levels where people can join. There's a uh, El Cheapo method, you know, um, and there's uh, full mentorship, which is not cheap, but uh, uh, definitely worth it uh, is what I have to say. So, um, but yeah, that's best, best way to reach out to me is, is definitely LinkedIn and then let me know, uh, you know, what you're interested in. But if you want to learn how to do what I'm doing or you want to invest passively, reach Excellent. I love it. And LinkedIn's a great place to reach out to me as well. I would like to mention to everybody, if you want to do me a solid, you can hit that subscribe button down there so those cheapskates at YouTube actually start paying for these videos instead of me. That would be fantastic. Yeah. But uh, thanks again, Brian. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you. Awesome. And we'll see you probably tomorrow at my TGIF multifamily meetup. You know. Absolutely. A great place to network and meet more syndicators, passive investors, operators, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks a awesome. lot.